All right, so um, I'm supposed to tell you briefly about the program SNAPI, which is a program for studying hyperbolic structures on three manifolds. Um, you can get it at the URL that's up there um, on the, I don't know, whatever direction that is. And uh, so this is a program that works on Macs, Windows, and Linux. Does not work on the iPad. You're apparently sadly behind. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you the program here on the Mac, but it works essentially the same way on, on any platform. Um, so I guess my, my talk sort of has three parts. First, I'm just going to give a very basic introduction to Snappy. Then I'm going to show you some recent features. And then I'm going to show you some stuff we did yesterday. Um, so, OK, so this is the basic interface when you start the program. <coughs> You see some kind of command line um, and a little flashing, flashing uh, cursor. Command line interface is always confusing. You never know what you're supposed to do. Uh, there's a little hint, though. Uh, at the top, it says we should type manifold. Uh, and this typing something and putting a question mark at it is one of the two key things you need to know to use now. All right, so when you type question mark after something, it brings up the documentation. Uh, and so it says, a manifold is a triangulation together with a geometric structure. So it's some kind of ideal triangulation. OK, and then there's more words. I don't like words. Uh, so what you should focus on is, is these blocks that start with these um, string of, of greater than signs. These are examples. So every piece of documentation uh, should come with some actual examples of how to use that particular thing. And so it says, here's an example of something I can do. Just copy that, paste it. So what it did now is Snappy comes with uh, you know, a couple million manifolds built in. And this just loaded the exterior of the not 942 from the standard rolls of the table. Um, and one of the examples that uh, was also in the documentation is you can find the hyperbolic volume of that by typing. Now, of course, there's any number of other properties of this manifold that are accessible. Um, so the second thing, besides using the question mark, uh, is that you can use tab completion to find out what you might do to this manifold. Uh, so if I type M, period, and then hit the tab key, it's like <coughs> 76 possibilities. Are you sure, Nathan? I'm like, well, maybe I'll just look at the ones that start with C. So here are some things you can do that start with C. You can build some covers. You can the complex volume. I don't know, that sounds cool. Let's do the complex volume. All right, uh, we get this number. Uh, what does that mean? Well, okay, we don't know what that means. So we go back to the first thing I told you, which is to use the question mark. Um, and it says the complex volume is, okay, it's the hyperbolic volume plus i times 2 pi squared times the churn assignments in there. Which is some other number. Um, and uh, so those are the two basic things that you need to know to use Snappy. Uh, the third thing that is super useful is the browse command. So this brings up a sort of more graphical type window, uh, which has a bunch of the basic information about the manifold right there in front of you. So, OK, we have type of bulk volume, which turns Simon's invariant, its first homology. Here's this plot presentation for the fundamental group. Um, you can look at. Uh, there's some here, some closed GD6, lengths of closed GD6. Uh, there's some stuff that's off screen, unfortunately, uh, which is just going to be inaccessible at this resolution. Let's not worry about it. Uh, we can look at the uh, here is the Dirichlet domain for this hyperbolic manifold viewed in the Point Gray model. Uh, we can stare down the cusp of this hyperbolic manifold, look at some kind of horrible packing. You can use the hyperbolic structure to do things like compute the symmetry group of this, in this case, not complement. Uh, and here's a picture of the link that starts uh, that from Rolfson's table, whose complement we are currently seeing. So there's also, so that's this browse thing. You can do this to any manifold. So it comes with a bunch of manifolds built in, <coughs> but you can also enter manifolds in a variety of formats. Um, if you just give it manifold and, and don't specify anything, 
it assumes you just want to enter the manifold from keep from the uh, by drawing like let's say a not exterior. Okay, we'll take this guy. Maybe we'll make it alternating, and then maybe I'll change one crossing. I don't know. Who knows what that did? Uh, let's take the exterior of this and send it back to the main window, and let's ask ourselves, okay. All right, it's a little bigger now. Uh, like Regina, Snappy comes with a large um, database of, of manifolds, and you can, if you have a manifold, you can ask it, is it in this database? Um, and under the hood, it's using a hyperbolic geometry to solve the homeomorphism problem. Uh, and this one turns out to have a number of names. Okay, so this is the name in the Rolfson table. This is the an eight crossing. This is the eighth eight crossing knot. It's an alternating knot. It wasn't an alternating projection, but it's an alternating knot. Um, and this is some census that Ben Burton did of manifolds with be triangulated with nine ideal tenders. Are there any questions? All right, so that's just some basics uh, of what SNAP you can do. Uh, Pat started us off with a demonstration of flat surf, which runs inside of Sage. And the programming language that I've nominally been interacting with in this window is Python, which is the same one that's used in Sage. And in fact, Python is a, sorry, Snappy is a Python module. You can use it in basically any version of Python you can likely find. Um, and therefore, Snappy can be used inside of Sage. And moreover, it gains a lot of extra features if you use it inside of Sage. So let me go ahead and use it inside of Sage. I'll come back to that command in a second. All right, so here's, um, here we are in Sage. I can import the Snappy library. I'm really indecisive this morning. I don't know which manifold I'd like to deal with, so I just picked a random one from this table. Uh, this is the non-alternating knot 13N3811. Here's its hyperbolic volume. Now, SNAP works using numerics, solving some algebraic equations using Newton's method, and so you might wonder um, how certain can we be that this really is a solution to these equations? Is this really honest to goodness a hyperbolic manifold? Um, and the answer is yes. Uh, and we can check that when we're inside of Sage by asking to verify the hyperbolicity. Um, and so it comes back and says, yes, it's hyperbolic. Uh, and these are the shapes of the tetrahedra in the sense that uh, we had in the last talk yesterday, um, and these are approximations for the shapes, and they're correct up until you get to the question. And beyond that, um, who knows? Uh, so this is using interval arithmetic and the ideas from Hickma, uh, but re-implemented here in Sage. Uh, we can, you know, you treat the volume, we'd like to be certain we're getting the volume. Let's say we want so this is, it is asked to compute the volume of this manifold. I want it to be verified, so that means the result is rigorous. Uh, and I ask it for 1,000 bits, which is about 300 decimal digits. Um, and so there's the first 300 decimal digits of the volume of this guy. Um, and you can do other things, like attempt to find a trace field of these manifolds. Um, oh, yeah, we can do things like I don't compute the Alexander polynomial. Uh, maybe just to go back, one thing uh, I should have shown back here is uh, you can really, Snappy can handle quite large manifolds. It's actually a little bit shocking how big a manifold it can handle. Uh, you know, so we looking at, you know, it was like a 13 crossing knot or something like that. That's sort of, you know, child's play. So I'm asking you just to generate a random link. 44 crossings, come on. So it's doing some simplification. That's why it's not giving me something. Hey, 185 crossings, that seems respectable to me. Um, 
Okay, so here's the picture. Uh, let's make this picture a little bigger so we can see it. Maybe at this resolution I may have done. All right, so this is a, a knot projection that was picked at random, about 185 crossings. Um, and uh, we can ask well, what's the uh, volume of this guy so we can take its exterior. 235, how many tetrahedra? So remember from yesterday, you could triangulate the figure eight knot with two ideal tetrahedra here. We're using 276. Uh, came up with Mark's talk is precision can be important. Uh, you can, in any version of snap heat, if instead of working in standard floating point precision, which is about 16 decimal digits, you can work in what's called quad double precision, just four times that, so about 60 decimal digits. We can compute more digits if we want, really. But not enough. That's too much. <laughs> Wait, so what's going on? Why is it? Ah, well, let's, 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 yeah. It's grumpy? It's grumpy. Okay. Uh, yeah, so anyway, so you can do things at, at sort of standard precision or high precision. And by computing Dirichlet domains and so on, you might need to go to high precision. And then especially in SAGE, you can do this verified thing where you can be certain that the results are correct. Um, and, uh, and that's nice. So uh, one problem you get into, OK, so SAMP is easy to install. You just install it the way you install any application on the relevant platform. Um, and uh, SAGE is, is also relatively easy to install. But then, of course, you have to install SAMP inside of SAGE. And maybe then you're like Mark and you want to compute A polynomials and you need to use PHC PAC, this numerical algebraic geometry software. And then for that, you need uh, an ADA compiler. You've got to get that to work. Um, and it becomes increasingly difficult to uh, build this software or to get anyone who's not Mark uh, to be able to use it. And so the last thing, the things you know did yesterday kind of thing, is I've been putting together a, it's called a Docker image. Uh, which has Sage and Snappy and Regina and all of its friends in one easy, convenient uh, to use package. So, not going to get into details, but uh, Docker is a lightweight virtual machine. So, you know, your typical virtual machine is really a you know, higher computer. So, maybe you're talking tens of gigabytes, a few hundred gigabytes. Uh, Docker image is usually much smaller. This one's quite large, it's, it's like a gigabyte of data compressed maybe five gigabytes expanded. Um, and so you can get this, I, I should, you should go to, well maybe I should just do this. We have some instructions for this that we put up yesterday. So this is where all of our development takes place on Bitbucket. Here's all of the, here's the main snappy source code. Here's various fun constituent parts. Um, this one is called Sage Docker. Uh, and there's some instructions if you have Docker installed, which is easy to install, at least on Windows and Mac. Um, you just pull the relevant image that gives you a copy of this virtual machine. Um, it's the virtual machine that I try to use whenever I do computations. And uh, then you can run it. Okay, <coughs> so here I ran it. So it created a Linux virtual machine. Who cares what that means? It just means that you can run Sage. Um, and uh, Here's Snappy, that's what we were using before. Oh, sorry. Oh, well, I think I did not update it. Okay. So my version's out of date. Why is this up to date? Oh, this is the old version. Change the name. Okay. So this will actually have Sage 8.1 on it, which was released a couple days ago. Here's Snappy, here's Regina, the Python binding that Ben was showing us. Here's Mark's A polynomial code. So we will compute an A polynomial from scratch. How about four to minus two, three, seven pretzel knot, which I happen to remember is this guy. Yes, got to store the data somewhere. Now uh, this is a simple one, so it's not a very good polynomial. Okay, but uh, it's quite difficult to install all the pieces of software you need to do this computation. 
uh, unless you use this convenient doctor. So that's uh, all I wanted to say, so thanks.